answering Epicurus. If God is just and of great might, then why does pain abound? It seems that either God does nothing care and so cannot be kind, or else that God cannot save us and so cannot be powerful. So if you insist that God is good and omnipotent, if God be real at all, then God cannot be real, for suffering is certain sure enough. Nature's red in tooth and claw, and merely to survive is tough. Unanswered Abel's blood to heaven does clearly call. The Hindu says that suffering is always well deserved. Those who seem innocent are guilty none the less. Calm has been accrued by them in a life previous. The evil they did do before has been conserved, and justice now its sure revenge is taking. Each victim is their own atonement making, for sins committed in the past they are paying. The Buddha tells us suffering's not real but a delusion. Attachment to the things of matter causes us confusion. The soul must be freed from physical encumbrance and rise above the realm of pain and find its peace in merging selflessly and wholly with the One by meditation and ceaselessly repeating Om. The deist tells us that God's justice is remote, for after all we are tiny things of little note. God observes the world from a great distance caring nothing for our plight. For though God's great, he looks at us askance. He has no empathy with our life's fight against suffering, decay and faction. Our pain is not a worthy motive for God's action. The Gnostic claims the cosmos is imperfect. The world was neither God's intent nor act. God is omnipotent and just and whole, but the Creator was incompetent in craft. The universe is flawed, but this is not God's fault. It never was God's business, it's making not his goal. The cosmos cannot be redeemed, matter is sick at heart. But freedom can be won by means of cult, for spirits in its trap to thence for heaven depart. Calvin says that our idea of good is not correct. God rightly gives us pain, for we deserve no better. If God elects to help, his power can this effect, for nothing may God's sovereign will impede or fetter. But, being ill, we have no right this to expect, and if God damns us, we may not object. Satan says that God's not just, but is a monster. His entertainment lies in causing us to suffer. There is no good or ill, but only power, and those who are afraid to exercise their share. In order to survive, you have to fight and strive. Don't look for any help. You are on your own. Learn that you can only live and thrive at the expense of those you've battered down. The wise believe that suffering has a purpose. Our business in this world is for ourselves to learn the difference between what's wrong and right, to ready ourselves for being with each other and with the triune living God forever, as yet we are from God's great flaming disk remote and may a while prepare ourselves to bask in God's most searing, bright and fearsome light.